Good morning, folks, as we watch Mercury on approach to geocentrically conjoin the sun in a few days. Know that we've got some earthquakes, weather, and science news to hit here, so let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star were exceptionally quiet. No sunspots or solar flares or CMEs. Southern coronal hole begins departing as the north comes more into view. The lack of flaring is because of the lack of sunspots, which are entirely absent from the sun at the moment, just a few bright fields connecting to the surface. Back at Earth, we did see the short and weak coronal hole stream die down, that's the purple mountain descending to the right. Speed of the plasma stream waning away and geomagnetic conditions are quiet this morning. You might recall, as we await for this one stream to arrive, we're magnetically connecting to it, and while we had no higher magnitudes, this one is more rare than a seven-pointer hitting the ring of fire. Rare locations, I'll take over high magnitude every time. But alas, this does tie for the fifth largest earthquake in Western Australia's history. Of course, we'll be disconnecting from that southern coronal hole, only to reach for the northern one over the coming days. Winner of the fake news catch of the week has to go to Stephen Stoddard. Very well done. Hurricane Florence trying to rip the weatherman off his feet, except that in the background there are a couple of guys in shorts lackadaisically strolling around. That one guy is texting. And look at the weather guy. He is the one who taught G-Unit how to stunt, by the way. Moving on to science. Brand new group attempting their hand at solar forecasting. This group uses magnetic measurements from the AP index to forecast a solar cycle roughly the same in strength as this one, perhaps slightly higher. FYI, this makes just about every forecaster in science and the observers forecast here for one more relatively weak solar cycle like we just had, followed by the potential for a run into grand minimum. An excellent paper attempts to work out the magnetosphere-ionosphere coupling mechanisms, the best of which has to be the penetration electric fields and similar couplings. And while they work out the plasma mechanisms way up there, the practical reality for us down here is this ties into the solar wind and IMF aspects of the solar forcing chart. The low energy particle streams and constant interplanetary magnetic connections this is how everything that affects the top layers electrically couples down to the surface through the geomagnetic and geoelectric systems. Lastly, on the news front, new magnetic anomaly map of Antarctica. Always fun to find these maps of mid-latitude, but we don't get the polar updates often. Green to blue is negative magnetic anomalies, while red to magenta are the positive ones. You will notice patterns of altitude, high positive anomalies, and lower lying negative ones. We greatly appreciate your support. We will do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.